Lambert-Eaton-Myasthenic Syndrome is a neuromuscular junction disorder that was first described by Lambert, Eaton, and Rook in the 1950s. It is a disorder of voltage-gated calcium channels in the presynaptic motor neurons, the neurons that supply the skeletal muscles. The voltage-gated calcium channels do not allow calcium influx, causing reduced acetylcholine release into the synaptic cleft, and thus reduced muscle contraction and weakness. Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome causes muscle weakness, which interestingly improves with activity, unlike the other neuromuscular junction disorder, myasthenia gravis, which manifests muscle fatigability. The more you use, the weaker the muscle gets. Myasthenia can be divided into ocular myasthenia and generalized myasthenia. Lambert-Eaton syndrome is a paraneoplastic syndrome because of its association with small cell lung cancer. Paraneoplastic syndrome can be described as an immunological phenomenon, but really are symptoms that occur at sites distant to where the tumor is. The presynaptic neuron houses vesicles containing acetylcholine at its terminal. When an action potential travels along the neuron, the voltage-gated sodium channels open, allowing influx of sodium ions inside the cell. This causes a positive electrical gradient, which then triggers voltage-gated calcium channels at the terminals to open up, allowing calcium ions to come inside the cell. Calcium ions trigger the vesicles to release acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter, into the synaptic cleft, into the neuromuscular junction. Acetylcholine binds to ligand-gated sodium channels, allowing sodium influx into the muscle, which eventually causes the muscle contraction. And because of this, when you check reflexes normally, you have reflexes present. The causes of Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome can be either paraneoplastic or non-paraneoplastic. The thought is that the immune system mounts a response to voltage-gated calcium channels from cancer cells, creating antibodies against the voltage-gated calcium channels, which has a predilection to specific types of channels found in the neurons. Non-paraneoplastic causes are associated with autoimmune diseases such as Graves' disease and type 1 diabetes mellitus. In Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome, these antibodies that are produced bind to the voltage-gated calcium channels at the terminal bulbs of motor neurons. They are fine to bind to the P-Q type voltage-gated calcium channels, thus really preventing calcium influx and then subsequently the release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. Because you have no acetylcholine, as a result, there is no muscle contraction you will have absent reflexes. Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome presents with proximal muscle weakness, mainly the lower limbs, absent reflexes, ptosis, autonomic disorders, including a dry mouth, sluggish pupils, and erectile dysfunction. One of the hallmarks of Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome is post-exercise facilitations. This is essentially when one performs repetitive activities or repetitive movements. Instead of fatigability, it forces depolarization and the release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. This post-exercise facilitation causes temporary improvement, which is the hallmark of Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome. And so investigations to order uh, for someone suspected of Lambert-Eaton syndrome uh, include nerve conduction studies. Here you will find reduced amplitude with increased in amplitude on repetitive stimulation. So on repetitive movement, it actually gets better. You can also check for voltage-gated uh, calcium channel antibodies and it's important to evaluate for malignancy, 
So for example, by performing SCT chest. Treatment involves treating the underlying malignancy, if found. For mild symptoms, it's important just to monitor. However, for moderate to severe symptoms, things such as amifambridine, a potassium channel blocker, can be used. Normally, there are potassium efflux pumps, which causes repolarization. And so inhibiting these channels means you have a depolarization, and so more acetylcholine can be released into the synaptic cleft, and then muscle contraction. Other medications that can be used include guanidine and pyrostigmine, which is an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. Acetylcholinesterase is an enzyme which breaks down acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. By blocking this enzyme with pyrostigmine, you prolong the effects of acetylcholine, which then binds onto the ligand-gated sodium channels, allowing sodium influx and muscle contraction. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We talked about the different causes of lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome, paraneoplastic and non-paraneoplastic, as well as the clinical features, including weakness, which interestingly improves with uh, movement, as well as investigations, including a CT chest and the antibodies. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.